All right, welcome back. Still period one, say hi. hi. This is Miss Linton, and we are continuing on in our chapter nine. This is mitosis and cytokinesis. So on the basics, let's talk numbers. Every cell I see of you, and will ever see of you, my entire life, will be diploid cells. And you were made by a sperm and an egg joining together. That sperm that came from your biological father had a copy of all the chromosomes, one copy of all the chromosomes. That egg by your mother had a copy of all the chromosomes. Each, the sperm and the egg, each had 23 chromosomes in it, and you could identify them. This is chromosome one from dad, chromosome two from dad, chromosome three from dad, and same thing for your mom. Chromosome one from mom, chromosome two from mom, and so on. When the sperm and the egg united through fertilization, that's another old chapter, and it formed a diploid zygote. That zygote now has two copies of chromosome one. One from mom and one from dad. Two copies of chromosome two, two copies of chromosome three, and so forth. Those are called homologous pairs of chromosomes. They are the same size, they are the same shape, and they code for the same characteristics. Your dad's chromosome might have said brown hair, your mom's chromosome might have said blonde hair, but they're both coding for hair what? Color. Same size, same shape, and code for those same characteristics. Those are diploid cells. Two copies of all the information. If I scrape her arm right now, I now have copies of all of her DNA. Not only that, I have half of her mother's DNA and I have half of her father's DNA right here, okay? Now, when you go to make a baby, this is when you have finished high school and finished college <laughs> and you are in a stable, loving relationship with a job that can support that child. You can practice up until then, but when it's real deal, when it's go time, okay? When it's go time, okay? Miss Litton, I feel uncomfortable. When it is go time, okay? You are going to want to send forth, not a mutant ninja turtle, okay? You're gonna want to send half your DNA. And ladies, we took care of most of that before we were ever born. We're like, that's on my list, check to do? Okay, done. Okay, and gentlemen, when I say the word gentlemen, you just made a thousand sperm. Gentlemen, hey, there's a thousand more. Doesn't mean you have to do anything with them. Okay, let them stay put, okay? But we will form gametes, and those gametes have half the amount of information, and we're not gonna do my arms, my legs, mitosis then, we're gonna do what? My 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 meiosis. So we only send either our mom's chromosome one or our dad's chromosome one. Okay, that's myomyomyosis, that's next chapter. Those types of cells, gametes, sperm and egg, those are not diploid, they are what? Haploid, okay, yes? But how is it determined, like, in dad cells are number one and mom's number two? Not, and that's the beauty of it, not because not. that gives us variety. And variety gives you opportunity to select the traits that are best for that particular environment. All right, now, if you look here at these diploid cells, you know, we might say, oh, we're so awesome because we have 46 chromosomes, but look, a potato has how many? <laughs> 48, okay? So I'm just saying it, it's, it's not numbers, okay? It's not the numbers, okay? This fern has 1,003, look, 1,320, okay? There, there's some, um, you're getting extra chromosomes in there. So on the numbers, a diploid number 2N is when you have two full sets of chromosomes. One set from each parent. Okay, keep that conversation to yourself. Two full sets of chromosomes. One set from each parent as found in somatic cells. Somatic cells are body cells. A haploid number is when you have only one set of chromosomes. A mixture of parental chromosomes, as in sperm or egg, and these are called gametes. They are called gametes. Now, when you get ready to do my arms, my legs, mitosis, and when you get ready to do myomymiosis, 
you will always have an F stage. And during the S stage of interphase is when you will copy all the chromosomes you have. And then it's your job to divide those up. In mitosis, you only have to do one division. It's like I copied all my DNA, and you each get a copy of it. When we get ready to do myomimiosis, I'm going to copy all my DNA, but I'm going to have to divide it how many times? Twice. Just to get down to half the chromosome. Okay? But we're just doing the straight up division. So those sister chromatids are made during the S stage of division. Now, I'm going to simplify it. This is super simple. Super, super simple. Okay? Take a look at this cell right up here. Do you see the churros? Oh, yeah. Centrioles, right? How many chromosomes are in this cell? Four. Four. So if I am going to make more cells, if I'm doing my arms, my legs, and mitosis, if I have four chromosomes in that cell, then all the daughter cells, that's what they call them, daughter cells, are, should have how many chromosomes in them? Four. Four. So I'm going to replicate all four of them. Whoa. I'm going to replicate all four of them. One, two, three, four. But now they have sister chromatids held together by a centromere. Now all I need to do is get all four to line up single file and separate. So I will have one, two, three, four here, and one, two, three, four here, okay? So then I will end up with two cells, each with how many chromosomes in them? Four. four. Now let me tell you, the, a, the new curriculum says you do not have to memorize the stages. However, you cannot talk later about where you have variation unless you know the names of the stages. It helps you organize. So they say you don't need to know it, but you really do need to know it, okay? And they're not hard, and we will go through them together, okay? So in essence, okay, let's take a look at them, and I'm gonna go through them with you first, and then we'll come back and put in the notes, because they're kind of easy, okay? The first stage is called prophase, and if you look here, they're going early prophase, prophase, and late prophase. Looking at this diagram, okay, with your bio buddy, what do you see happening through the stages of prophase? What do you see happening? Describe it with your bio buddy. As you work from left to right. Uh, what goes away? Yeah, the nuclear envelope breaks down. Who else goes away? The nucleolus goes away. Now, you've got to think about why does the nucleus have to break down? Well, because the contents, we're going to separate into two different cells, right? So we've got to break down the wall that kept them enclosed, yes? It's not really a wall. Okay, the nuclear envelope. Also, you've got to organize these chromosomes. Remember when we learned about the cytoskeleton? There were microfilaments, intermediate, and microtubules. And remember about the MTOC, microtubule organizing center, okay, that came and sat in the center zone? Remember churros? Yes. Okay, those two churro areas separate to either side, either pole of the cell, and start sending out microtubules. The microtubules are gonna help push and pull the chromosomes apart, so one sister goes here and one sister goes here. You know what's a really good way to think about it? Think about the churros as being like a clothesline, the poles, the poles of a clothesline. Do you know what a clothesline is? Yes. In poor countries, okay, <laughs> you don't do it that often. How many of you hang up your clothes on a clothesline? I hang up my clothes that are hand, my hand washables because I cannot have them dry in a dryer, right? So that would be a type of a clothesline. But a lot of you just put all your clothes in the what? Dry. Dryer. Okay? But you have a poles right here, okay? And a clothesline coming across. Those are microtubules where you hang up your jeans. <laughs> <laughs> okay? So all of that happens, this process, getting ready for it, happens during um, prophase. Okay? Then... Okay, so this whole thing is called mitosis. Re yes? Oh, I was just curious, um, when the chromosomes replicate, why is there a centromere? Why can't they just... Um, because what you want to ensure is also to on the next stage, in metaphase, all the chromosomes line up right here, and that way you can ensure one goes here and one goes here. Okay. So the chromosomes line up in metaphase, and you can see... Here's a really 
you can see the centrioles are there, but do plant cells have centrioles? No, but they do cell division just fine. That's because if you remove the centrioles, what you would have there is just an area where all these microtubules are coming out. So they meet in the middle at metaphase to get themselves all organized. Now, where they, all the microtubules spreading out, do you see how it kind of looks like an asteroid or something like that coming, shooting through the sky? Do you see it? Like where all the microtubules are going everywhere? That's called an aster, right there, is an aster. Okay, so that happens during metaphase. Then look what's happening during anaphase. The reason why it appears like this is the sister chromatids were right here, and now watch, go like this. They're getting pulled away. Oh, do you see it? So right here by their centromere. So they were like this, and they're going away. Okay? And then take a look here. What's starting? Is this called telephase? Which telephones that maybe you've seen in old movies, what I grew up with, is a telephone, you'd go like this and had a little dangly cord and you went like this and your grandma has one? Oh my gosh, they still exist. Okay, so it was always easy to remember telephase because it looked kind of like a telephone that you used to hold up to your ear. I know, it's crazy. Um, but here you can see your nuclear envelopes reforming, your nucleolus is reforming, and then what's gonna happen right now is cytokinesis, division of the cytoplasm. And that will divide it up into those two different cells. So if I do this, you can kind of see the whole thing, and now I'm gonna teach it to you. The whole thing is called mitosis. Mitosis, mitosis, okay? First stage, first stage, okay? The chromosomes, so see how I'm making chromosomes right here? What are these? Chromosomes. Yes, but what are these? Scissor cut, okay, so you go like, the chromosomes become visible. So you're touching your eyes. Chromosomes become visible. The nuclear envelope and the nucleolus disappear. Disappear. Radiating microtubules. I know what that's reminding you of. What is it reminding you of? It all circles back. Okay, so what's the whole thing called? Mitosis. Okay, first stage is what? Prophase. The chromosomes become visible, the nuclear envelope and the nucleolus disappear, radiating microtubules, astrid. And watch. They meet in the middle at metaphase. Do it with me. They meet in the middle at metaphase. Away at anaphase. Do it with me. Away at anaphase. To nuclei at telophase. To nuclei at telophase. Cytokinesis. I'm dividing the cell. <laughs> okay. Whole thing, ready? I know it's lame, but I don't care. <laughs> All right, whole thing from the top. Here we go. The whole thing is called mitosis. The first stage is called prophase. The chromosomes become visible. The nuclear envelope and the nucleolus disappear, radiating microtubules. They meet in the middle at metaphase, away at anaphase, to nuclei at telophase, cytokines. Good, very good. So you know all of mitosis right now. All right, so let's look at your notes. Mitosis is generates two identical cells. And I'm just gonna give you the parts you need. On one A, Chromosomes consisting of two sister chromatids become visible. For B, break down. For C, the word that you're looking for is this. What's this? Asters. Asters. Are alpha and beta all helping? And metaphase, chromosomes meet in the middle. In 3A, sister chromatids are pulled or pushed apart. And number four, telophase, nuclear membranes with nucleolus reform. Sister chromatids are now called chromosomes. And cytokinesis, 
Division of cell forming two cells. Forming two cells. Now, in animal cells, this is called a cleavage furrow, but plants can't do a cleavage furrow to divide because they have a cell wall that they build. So right here, they have to rebuild it. It starts out as a cell plate and becomes a cell wall. So in animal cells for one, cleavage furrow, two, plant cells. Do one, one more thing, we already talked about it. Function, mitosis by somatic cells is for growth and repair. And then you have everything else. Okay, when am I gonna see you again? Monday. Monday. What are you going to do before I see you on Monday? Chapter 10 terms and review what we did today. Okay? All right. Have good weekends. Make good choices. Be smart.